Okay, so for this demo, I'm going to show you how to retouch old photographs and clean them up, remove things like water spots, and correct color. So our first image, this is a idea, this is to give you an idea what the end product can look like. This is going to be our beginning product here. And for this image, we are going to be using an image from the Library of Congress. This is Francis L. Clallan. And I have downloaded this by going to the bottom here, download, and it's already in a folder. I'll show you. If you go to open, it's where we downloaded it, and we're going to go ahead and just pretend to open that again. So, first thing I'm going to want to do is go down here to the zoom and click fit screen hide the history here. This is a way to make sure that I can see this and that I'm getting the most out of my screen. So first off, you can see it's the image is crooked. It's got some little speckles and watermarks and a little bit of haze and some other stuff to it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start out, go over to the crop tool. First thing we're going to do is we're going to straighten it. You see I already am going right for it. First button up here is this little level button. If you click on this, get this little, and then we click over the right hand corner here, drag down to the bottom, and then let go. It automatically straightens the image. So next, because everything here is a little crooked, I'm going to go ahead and pull the image in by grabbing the thick parts of this little bounding box and try to keep as much of that image as I can. When I have this all down to the cropped area, go ahead and hit enter. And there is our cropped image. You can already see if we hit zoom again here, zoom in. It's a little bit of extra, so I'm going to hit the crop button again. Move this in just a little bit. And I think I saw some on the bottom, so a little up as well. And enter again. Click back on zoom and go back to fit screen. So the next thing we're going to want to do is these little speckles and just other places like that. Photoshop has a very handy series of tools called the spot healing brush and the patch tools. So we're going to start with the spot healing brush. We're going to click on this little band-aid picture. I'm going to go over, we're going to click on this first little dot here and you'll see it just automatically disappears. Click on this one. If we want we can even click and drag highlighting an entire area. Let go. And I'm going to click here, if you can see, hit undo real quick, you can see that this, this spot here and this spot here, the way that the spot healing brush works is it duplicates bits, little pieces from around the image. And one of the shortcomings of it is that sometimes it duplicates very unique things so that you end up with a pattern. And of course, being that humans always look for patterns, it really takes away from the magic of the image. So we're going to just click and drag, scrub that one out too, and click there. And Oops, okay. So I'm going to zoom in on this. In this case, you can see it took his eye over here and it put it there. So undo, control Z, so I just hit there. Click back on the spot healing brush, and we're going to go down as far away from that as we can. And keep zoomed in here. We press and hold the space bar, and click and drag to move around. And that's just another little shortcut. Click up here, and you can see there's this in this area up here. And for this, whoop, wrong button there. For this, what I want to do. So I want to use a larger tool. So I'm going to go back over here to the spot hitting brush. I'm going to click and hold. You can see there's other tools in here. So other ones are going to be like the patch tool. 
And so if we go click and hold and then release on the patch tool, and then we click and we drag around this, and we get to try to get this guy here too. You'll end up this little area circling this. So now what we do, if we click and hold, it takes a spot in the rest of the image, just a big spot, and copies it into that space. So I'm going to hold this area here and let go. And you can see it kind of blends it in too. So select, deselect, and just like magic. Go back to fit screen. So this is starting to look pretty good. The next thing we're going to want to do is go up to filter, and we're going to use one of the noise, whoop, one of the noise menu pieces here that's going to be despeckle. So if we click on this, it'll take a little bit of that photographic grain out. So if we zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to hit undo, you can see that it's kind of grainy. And then Control Shift Z, which is redo. And it takes a lot of that, a lot of that the film grain out of the image. Go back to fit screen. Another tool that's up here that's really handy is going to be if you go to noise and you go back down to dust and scratches. And you'll see here it pops up this menu. It has a zoom in, zoomed in function. And what this will let us do, if I zoom this in even further, turn off preview, turn it back on, and this preview, what the preview checkbox does is it shows you what this would look like. So if, for instance, I drag this way up, so a radius like this, this blurs out the image. You can show it, it shows it here. If I uncheck preview, it comes right back, but it still shows you what it would look like in this. So that's handy if your computer doesn't have a very fast processor. And sometimes in bigger images, it'll take a while to preview. So with this, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of play around. And I think just because I did this image a little while ago, it's still set to the one radius of one pixel and a low threshold, so one level. If you turn the levels up, you lose a lot of the grain to it. I might even go up as far as maybe two or three or seven. And with these tools, you just kind of mess around and eventually find something that looks good. You can zoom way in if you really want. You can start seeing the pixels here. And hit OK. And that just gives you a little bit of an extra retouch to it. So for our next one, this is great for black and white. And we can even go in here and we can adjust the black and white. If we wanted to take the sepia out, we click this button here, black and white, under adjustments. And we can just based on the various colors in there, if we wanted to bring up Bring it up with just the reds, maybe the yellows. You can adjust these levels. And this will let you see this one, for instance. There wasn't that much blue in this image, so this is very slight. That one doesn't even really seem to do anything. You can also hit the auto button. It will automatically do something. I do want it a little bit brighter. And so that's just another way you can adjust a black and white photo. Now let's say, though, that we want to use a color photo. For a color photo, I have another one from the Library of Congress. I found a shepherd with his horse and dog. And you can see already here, it's a scanned-in photograph. It's crooked. It has a lot of little marks from what I'm guessing is probably the camera. And it has a little bit of a tint to it. And there's some other things that we'll, we'll get into here in a second. So if I went ahead and downloaded it, which I have, go ahead and minimize this, and go to where I downloaded, open it up, and we can see 
already, like we were saying, it is crooked. So we're going to start. We're going to click over here on the crop tool again. Click up on straighten. Go up to a corner. And we could use any corner, really. I always use the right-hand side, and it's just me. And we can straighten that. Next, we're going to go ahead and crop out that part of the negative of the film that you can see in the image, as well as the stuff up there. I'm not sure if this is space aliens or something. And go ahead. You can also, if you don't want to hit enter, you can also hit this checkbox up here. This is also cancel or undo. And there we are. So next, let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and start inspecting this image. And as we get a little closer, you can start to see there's things like there's a little hair here on the negative, some little speckles. So we'll start out. We're going to go ahead and that same filter. Or despeckle works on this as well. Whoop, hit screen. Now it worked, but it still has left this hair on here. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the spot healing brush, click on that, and we'll go ahead and we'll click on a few of these other little places. And I'm going to click and hold the space bar so that I can move around. And with it really zoomed in like this, I'm going to clean up. So with one like this, uh, that actually worked. But if I want to right click, I can also get a smaller sized dot when it works there. And we are looking pretty good. Maybe here. Whoop. Undo that last one. OK. Go back down to Zoom. Fit screen. So at this point, we're looking pretty good, but as you can see, it does have that kind of tint that a lot of older photographs tend to, the yellowing from the sun or whatever it is that yellows photographs. To fix that, we're going to go back over to this adjustments. And in adjustments, there is this little, looks like zigzaggy thing called levels. If you click on levels, it brings up a properties menu that has these, this is the color levels, the amounts of each color that are in the image. On the left hand side, you see three little eyedroppers. This bottom, this top one is the black point for it, so the darkest of black. So if we go ahead and click on this, what we're going to do with this, in fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make this work a little better. So I'm going to choose the darkest place, the place that I want to be the truest black on the image. I'm going to click on it. You can see right off the image, that's really dark. So we're going to undo that. And we're going to go down to this bottom one, the white one. So this is dark point, midpoint, white point. I'm going to click on white point. And this will very quickly take out the yellowing by clicking on the horse's, main, or horse's face here. I'm going to say this is going to be the whitest white in the image. So we click on that. And right there, we already have, I'm going to hide that, we already have an image that looks a lot better. You can adjust these levels as well manually. So let's say we wanted to darken up the image, give a little more 
more balance, we can darken it up using, by setting the midpoints higher, we could lighten it, I'm sorry, darken it by setting the dark point. We could even lighten it further if we wanted, really wash out the image by dragging that white point as far as we want. For now, though, I would say this is about what I want. And so I would go up and I would go to File and Save. And because I want it as a JPEG, I save it in here as JPEG and underscore retouched. You can see I've already done the other one. Whoops. Definitely have caps lock on. And save. And I'm going to choose maximum because it's not that big of an image and I want it to maintain all of its size and beauty. So I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.